Loud Classic Mini Screw, the small micro screw that we used to use. Um, you would only, whenever you would use these for full upper arch, because they were used for full upper arch, you would have 0.4 millimeters of material underneath the screw head, but you would engage four turns into the multi-unit abutment, which is important. So whenever you screw a screw into a full upper arch, it would actually, whenever it torques down, you need four turns inside the multi-unit abutment to be able to rigidly fixate and prevent the screw from backing out, prevent the screw from loosening. Like, I know people have heard screw loosening is an issue. You just need the minimal amount of terms, which is four, to get enough preload and clamping forces to be able to hold down your full upper arch and prevent the screw from backing out. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but just to introduce that concept now. Again, the issue is not enough material underneath the screw head. You would have 0.4 millimeters of material and eventually it would fracture. The other issue I have with the screw is it is a butt joint screw. The head of the screw is two millimeters. The threads are 1.4, but you only using 0.25 millimeters of radius of this screw head to hold down the full upper arch. That's not enough material and that's a lot of pressure on this screw head and eventually you would have fractures of the screw, right? Um, so let's get away from that. And then we, desk, so this is the, on the left picture is the, the mini screw and this is the longer screw. So this was like the answer to all of our problems to be able to create a longer, taller screw where you could get more zirconia and prevent the fracture of these upper arches. Now the issue with that is this screw, um, even though it was taller, I like this idea where you put more zirconia. So this is basically the multi-unit abutment here. This is the screw head. So this is the amount of zirconia you would get underneath the screw head. And it's 1.4 millimeters is, is the exact amount which you would get underneath. And to demonstrate that a little bit more for us is our colleague, Horst, who invented the eye metric. He's going to give a little talk about the different screws. That's the geometry that would be used if you use this direct, yeah? And uh, 34, that's what it looks like for the tie base from this. And 36 is basically the same with the library from us, we use the same screw. And 42, this is this long screw. So on 32, you have like 0.4 millimeter space between here and the air. So you have 0.4 millimeters of printed material. And that simply rips too easy. And with 42, we have like 1.4 millimeters, yeah? And that gives you a lot more space, and, and a lot of people use that. And they simply buy the longest screw from this and all the design and everything is, is existing here. And then Rosen, he developed this screw, which is sort of conical and works with, with the friction of the whole head here, yeah. So basically he was talking about, this, this, this video is an old video, but this is the 34 is the desk screw with this tie base, right? 32 is the desk, same desk screw, but without a tie base. Right, so this is the zirconia. He was saying 0.4 millimeters underneath the screw head. So they came out with the 42, which is 1.4 millimeters, which he was saying was much, much, much better. And he was saying then, then recently, or this was, again a while back, because Dan Rosen's screw's been out for a long period of time. But this is the this screw holds down from the lateral wall. So this is a butt joint screw. This is 44 is uh, holds down from the lateral walls. You can see 0.2 millimeters of radius for a butt joint isn't as great as more walls of retention of your screw, right? So I hope that concept rings clear. This is the Dan Rosen screw for full upper arch. This is actually his original design here, but um, he was smart enough to thicken up the screw to prevent fracturing of the screw head because he, he knew there was a lot of tension on the screw. Um, so this was his screw. He talks about how this holds down from the lateral walls. This technology and this technique and the screw and this concept have been out for a long time in Prosto. This is not a new concept for us. Um, Dan was just smart enough to, you know, get a patent on it for a full arch. So again, the mini screw would cause some fractures of zirconia because there's not enough thickness. So per to prevent the thickness issues, we're holding down from the lateral walls, right? But he's also saying you can't torque these out. You can only use hand torque pressure to put these in. Um, but it wouldn't give you angle correction, so you couldn't mill angulated screw channels. So there was a screw that came out with the ability to, mo to mill angul angulated screw channels, right? And it was a taller screw, but again, it went back to the butt joint where the, the screw was holding down the apex or the bottom of the, of the screw. The other issue I had with this screw is that the final drill for the hyperdent profiles is using a two millimeter diameter um, screw to be able to mill that out and that would weaken the zirconia and you have these really big fat holes to be able to fit the screw through 
and you can see these are really massive holes compared to these holes. So this is the screw that I came out with, the Vortex screw for full upper arch. You can see how tiny these screw holes are compared to this screw. Now, there, it, this is the weakness of this full upper arch, in, all the, these screw holes. So the more zirconia, can you imagine having a, a wide two moment around this hole right here? It's just it's gonna fracture, there's no way it can hold up. So you have to make these big and beefy whenever you use this screw. And on this one, you can have them a little bit more delicate or look a little bit more like natural teeth. If, even if you wanted to go FP1, that'd be conceptual. So obviously the market was moving over to angulated screw channels for full arch. Um, and Des came out with a concept to mill a flat surface at an angle. It is very, don't ask me, ask your lab tech if it's easy to mill a flat surface at an angle and you'll get your answer. Um, you can only go up to a certain amount to be able to get this predictably and it's still very difficult to do. So, and then this is the, this is the vortex screw. So this is the vortex screw and this is the, the desk tall screw, right? You can see the height of this screw compared to the height of this screw, right? So you, underneath our vortex screw, you have more material just like the desk long screw, right? Just a compar comparison analysis. And then this is just the mini screw versus the desk long. So you can see 0.4 millimeters of material at the screw head, four turns, but this is 1.4 actually, or 1.2 underneath the screw head and 0.25. But the 0.25 radius is still a killer for me in these butt joints. Um, if you wanna learn more about the Vortex screw, this is the screw here. This is the 1.4 and the 1.6. Click on this link right here with your phone. You'll be able to watch a free video that'll take you to a YouTube channel and it's about a five minute video to kind of go in depth of the advantages of the screw.